Hello everyone and welcome to another Mondays with Michelle video. This week we're exploring Peter Higginbotham's website on prisons. Like his workhouse and children's homes websites, this resource has many pages of information as well as photos, maps, diagrams, and census extracts. Let's get started. This is the third of Peter Higginbotham's websites that we've looked at. We previously looked at his website on the workhouses, and then we looked at the website on children's homes. This is his newest venture on prisons. So you'll notice it's a very familiar format. We have a table of contents on the left-hand side. And the home page again just gives a bit of an overview. If we click on introduction, we have all of that background information. So we have a page on early prisons and links to Fleet Prison, talking about the history right from the 12th and 13th centuries, how prisons were set up. There is a page here on fees, the costs that the inmates had if they were incarcerated. So there's background information and pictures on that topic. There's quite an extensive description on the prison food, um, the kinds of meals they had. He's got a whole section on women in prison, um, how they were in, in many cases housed separately, talking about their experiences in prison. There's a page on Transportation to America, which we've covered in other talks, focusing on those transport ships and the convicts that were sent both to Australia as well as to North America. So there's some background information on that here. He also has a section talking about prison reform, which he says began in the 18th century and looking at the state of the prisons and what needed to be done to improve them. There's a page on the national prisons, the ones that came under the control of the government and that that started in the 19th century. And he also has a section on young offenders and how the younger inmates of the prison, how that spun off into the reformatory schools. So there's links from this website to information on his children's um, website for the reformatory and industrial schools. Now, if we look at types of prisons, just like with the other websites we've looked at, we've got the different categories. So they talk about the county jails, the town jails, Bridewell's debtor's prison. I was interested to read about that since one of my Renton ancestors was in debtor's prison in York. So I thought it was quite interesting they had this lovely picture of York debtors prison. So he's got quite a bit of information as well as some references and links at the bottom of the page if you are interested in reading about that. He's got information on what he calls convict prison and about Millbank Penitentiary which was one of those classed as a convict prison. He's also 
got a little bit of information on what he calls local prisons and lockups. And I love this picture of the local lockup, just this small stone building to, it says they could be standalone buildings or incorporated into a large building such as a town hall or police station. Prison ships, we've talked about before, so there is some information on those ships. And he's also got a page on Borstals, which initially started as an experiment with Borstal Prison where they decided to segregate the younger inmates. And that model was then adopted by other institutions and they were referred to as Borstal institutions. So that's the information under types of prisons. And just like with his other websites, when you look at a detail page, there is often a link at the top which gives you a list of those types of in, of uh, prisons. So if we go to, for instance, debtor's prison, this is our list of debtor's prison and I can click back to the information page and get that overview. We've also got list by location. And because this is his most recent effort, what I noticed is he doesn't have detail information pages for everything. So for example, if we click on the Essex to London section and we look at the list of prisons in London, you notice just about every entry on here is a clickable link. Actually, everyone is a clickable link, meaning there is another detail information page on that prison. Whereas if I look, if I go back up here and I click on Shropshire to Yorkshire, and click on some of the Yorkshire links, you notice none of these are blue clickable links. This is just a text list. Same with North Riding, same with West Riding. And when I took a look, it looked to me as if he had, let me just see, where did he get to? So he's got Middlesex. He's got Lancashire, Leicestershire, Lincolnshire, he's got London. So it looked to me if he's working his way alphabetically, he hasn't yet made it past Middlesex from the look of it. So I'm hoping that he's going to continue his efforts and over time make his way through the alphabet and get all the way up to the detail pages for Yorkshire. Um, because certainly when you look at the kind of information that is available on those other um, prisons, it would be very nice to have that same level of detail available for those prisons in Yorkshire. And he also has lists of prisons in Scotland that you can look at, Isle of Man and Channel Isles. Now, we've looked at list by location, we've looked at list by type, just like with the other websites, you could look at the prison rules of operation for a few of the prisons. The part of the website I found the most fascinating was 
the prison museums. And I have to say, I'm very envious that um, all of you live close enough to physically visit these prison museums. And I'm going to show you some of the websites that I selected that I found of interest. So for instance, Buckingham Old Jail and Museum sounds like a really interesting place to visit if you are just wanting to look online. They have this section on their website called the Grimsdale Chronicles and it is basically a series of stories about some of the inmates of the prison. So I found that was really interesting to read. You can basically click on an entry and read the story. This next prison website I looked at, the Bodmin Jail. Now this one I thought I would really love to go visit. When you look at what they have, they've got the Bodmin Jail experience. So it tells you all about the different sites that you will see. What I thought was really interesting about this particular location though, they actually have the Bodmin Jail Hotel. And I thought now that would be really fascinating to if you were a tourist, spend the night in the Bodmin Jail Hotel, although I suspect the accommodations are certainly far more luxurious than any of the inmates ever experienced. Another prison website that is quite good, the Lancaster Castle prison website. So the links on top, there's all kinds of information on the history about the castle today. And again, when you scroll down, if you are looking for online content, they do have some information on stories for some of the individuals who were incarcerated there. So that's why I wanted to point out that website. The next one I wanted to show you is this website on the Clink Prison. And one of the things that appealed to me about this particular prison, it was one of the uh, prisons that was kind of the, the feeder link for the ships going to America, taking some of the convicts specifically the Mayflower. And what I ended up discovering, this Mayflower tour app, that led me down the rabbit hole of reading about this app, which is a virtual guided tour of the sites of interest. And this is much like some of the virtual tours I showed you when we were looking at some of the archive websites where you could do a walking tour, a narrated walking tour. And I'll show you what that looks like. So the Mayflower walking tour app is available for both Android and Apple devices. So I downloaded the app onto my iPad and let me just show you how it works. So the app looks like this. Let me just move my zoom window over here. And if you click on the about link on the left hand side of the screen, it gives some background information about the Mayflower and its voyage. If you click on destination selector, the link at the top left of the screen, 
what it's showing you here is all the places in England associated with the Mayflower and its journey. So the place that we're going to look at right now, if I just make this a little bit bigger, we're going to touch the little balloon that's over Plymouth. So if I touch that one, it's now giving me an information box about Plymouth and the role that that played in this Mayflower Trail. And I can now touch Explore Trails. And what I'm looking at is the Mayflower Trail for Plymouth. And if I want to look at the details, I click Start Trails. This is showing me all of the different points of interest on the walking trail in Plymouth. And I can touch one of the balloons. So if I touch number one, I can then go through and look at all of the information available at that point. And the last line of text tells me the next stop. It says from West Pier, walk a short distance north to the next stop, the Barbican. And if I touch that link, now I'm at the information on the Barbican. And similarly, I can keep following the trail and click on the next link. Or I could press this back link at the top of the screen and go back to the map and choose a completely different balloon if I wanted to just find out information. If I was viewing this from home, for example, and didn't necessarily want to go through the links in order, I could touch the balloon for eight and it will take me to that point on the tour. So I can then choose to do a completely different destination. I could expand this map and maybe I want to see what is this link over in the Netherlands. So I could click on that and explore that trail and see how that linked in with the whole story of the Mayflower. And the last prison website is York Castle. And this one has a few interesting features. So you can look at information about the prison, life in the prison, some information about petitions. They have pictures and information on keepers and prisoners. So you can scroll through and see a little video about the person. But down here at the bottom left, there's this family history box where I can type in a name and click the magnifying glass to search. And this is a searchable database. So this is saying there were no Dawsons that were executed, but apparently there were three that were transported. And it also lists those who were debtors. So this is giving you some information on the particular individuals who were incarcerated. You could also search on a crime. So for instance, I could type in murder or I could just click on this murder link and it is showing you the list of all those individuals convicted of murdering someone. There were 123 of them executed, six were transported. So again, an interesting website. I hope you enjoyed learning about this week's video. Don't forget to download the handout. You'll find the link in the video description at the bottom of your screen. 
You may have to click more to see the handout links. Thanks for watching.